up you guys? I am back from Petit Le Mans and I realized I didn't really do an intro or outro while I was there. I was focusing more on the race this year. So this year to kind of fill the video out, make it a little bit more worth y'all's while, I'm going to go over some tips and tricks that I picked up in my two trips to Petit Le Mans to make your trip that much easier. Also, we're going to be announcing the winner of the steering wheel at the end of the video. So for you guys who entered the 1000 subscribers giveaway, I'll be announcing that at the end, so stick around for that. Petit Le Mans is an amazing value for money. It's a great way to spend a Saturday or even a Thursday, Friday, Saturday if you have that much vacation time and you really like racing that much. For most of you guys, you're just going to do the Saturday event, which is the main 10-hour race. Uh, it goes from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. But number one, get there early. Show up at like 8.30 or 9. There's plenty of stuff to do. You have the pit walk, which is amazing. You have to do that. They put all the cars out front line everything up, they let you all walk out there, but if you're not like the one of the first people out there, it's going to be so crowded you can't even really get that close to the cars without muscling your way through. So if you want a really good picture of a Ford GT, you got to be one of the first people in line. Run over there, get your great photo for your Instagram, and then kind of funnel into the crowd. But it is so worth it, so awesome to see all these cars up close and get a good appreciation for how much effort and craziness goes into these cars. Also, it makes parking easier. Parking is not difficult, but if you get there a little bit later, a little bit more like 9.30 range, you're gonna sit in some traffic trying to funnel into the parking. I park across the street at the Lanier Speedway, which is like a drift track now. They have shuttles to shuttle you back and forth. It's only like a quarter mile walk, so I just walk it. But parking up on the road Atlanta side of the street is just not worth it. It takes forever, it's always full, you're gonna funnel back and forth for no reason. Just go ahead and park across the street at Lanier, I think it's way easier. And unless you just have to park in the corral with other people from your marquee, I just don't think it's worth the extra money. I do think it's really cool to walk through the Corvette corral and the Porsche corral and the BMW corral and see all the cool cars that people bring this year. I saw a 2.7 Carrera RS, which was amazing. I've never seen one before. I might never see one again. Really special cars in there, so at least check it out at some point during the race. Um, another thing to do before the race or early on in the race, go get some free swag. You spend $70 on the ticket, which kind of sounds like a lot, but at the same time, it's really not. I got this Corvette racing shirt, this Cadillac racing shirt, this Porsche poster, this BMW poster, this Continental Tire hat. You get a lot of free stuff as long as you go in early, you give them your email, answer a couple survey questions, and boom, you get free stuff. So it's probably like 50 or $60 worth of free stuff. That's gonna cover most of the cost of your ticket. You still have 10 hours of racing and getting to see all these cool cars that you wouldn't normally get to see. So with all the free swag, it is definitely worth it, even if you're not that super big into the racing. The racing is amazing. You can go wherever you want. You can go to any corner. You can sit one place for an hour, go sit another place for an hour or you can stay in one spot for the whole race. I really like the turn 10 complex because you got everybody coming down the back straight, dive bombing into the corner and passing some people and then waving through that little chicane and going up the hill under the bridge. It's a really good place to sit. You can also sit at the top of the S's or in the S's, or you can sit at, I think it's the top of turn three and look down the S's. There's a lot of different great places to sit and you can sit wherever you want. Find out what you like. I highly recommend bringing a chair. The regular fold up chairs are fine and everything. I've got a beach chair that works amazing. The beach chair works a lot better because it's got the wide bar so it kind of absorbs some of the imperfections in this terrain. Really the only place with setup actual seating is on the front straight. And even then they're not that comfortable and it's not that great a place to sit. You don't get a whole lot of action going down the front straight. It's got a little cooler pack on it, a little pouch to store stuff so I can bring in food and water and a towel and sunglasses and a hat and all this different stuff all in one spot. So I just go sit out my chair. Oh, it's time for lunch. I pull out some food and I eat a snack. If you want to buy food there, bring cash. It's just so much easier. Some of the places do cards, but most of them don't. Just bring cash um, or you're going to be using the ATM. And again, other than the awesomeness of racing, you also have in the little Fanville area, they have racing simulators with like really proper seats that move and big screens and everything. You can wait in line for that. You get to see cool cars like the Ford GT was there, the GT350R, the M4 CS, the brand new M5. We've got all sorts of new stuff there for you to look at. You know, they've got like an LT4 sitting there and you've got cutaways you can see inside the supercharger and you can see inside the cylinders. 
So it's just a really cool event to get in and see all these cars up close and personal and cars that you would probably never see in a normal Cars and Coffee. It's a wonderful event. It is a great value for money. I highly recommend it. I will definitely be going again next year. I'm probably going to try to go to the Daytona 24 hour in January. We'll see. But I can't recommend it enough. If you have any questions about what should you do or when you should buy or whatever, anything that I haven't covered, drop them in the comments below or message me on Instagram or on Facebook and I will gladly help you guys out. We're going to move into the footage and again at the end we've got the steering wheel winner. So stick around for all of that and enjoy the video guys. So here's the car that won last year. Again, they have this super cool motif going all the way down. Fan walk is amazing. If you are going to come to Petit Le Mans, you have to come do the fan walk. Get here early. You get to walk the grids. And you can see how crowded it is. So if you get here early, you get a better look at all the cars. We've got the prototypes down here at the bottom into the GT Le Mans and then GT Daytona. I'm going to go peek at all the GT Daytona cars, get a little bit of uh, aerodynamic inspiration. The hood duct on the Audi R8 is just amazing. It's exactly what I want. It's definitely more crowded than last year, so getting boxed out pretty quick, but I'm going to go take a picture of the Turner tent with my Turner Motorsports shirt. And yeah, just trying to enjoy the morning. We'll see where it takes us. this shows up on the camera but the bottom of this GT3 cup car is perfectly flat I mean 100% there's nothing not even a neck duct at the bottom of this car it is 100% flat front to back so but even though the engines in the way and you only have this little baby flip up as a diffuser it's still going to be very aerodynamically efficient which is exactly what I want out of a 350z and looking here at the side of a splitter, you can see this is the carbon fiber splitter and they have almost what looks like some sort of condensed fiber board as a sacrificial piece so that if anything happens, this gets scraped up, I can swap it out, it's cheap and I don't have to redo this carbon fiber part. Here's another shot of the floor. Just look how flat it is. It's amazing. Got these great big vents sticking out of the top here. Ah, it's just beautiful. So I was walking to leave Petit Le Mans when I stumbled across this, which is the Ford GT Corral. And that I can count, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10, at least 10 brand new GTs. So that means I've seen 12 of them today, which is insane. At least two GT40 kit cars, and I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, at least 16 of the 05 GTs. So this is like, damn, that's a lot of money right here. Very cool way to end my weekend. So here we are. I have everyone's name listed in here who entered the contest by following me on Instagram, commenting in the video, liking the video, subscribing, and following me on Facebook. So we'll see who wins the steering wheel. Moment of truth. XODXZ. So I will be finding you on Instagram. I'll be sending you a message. We'll try to figure out how best to ship the steering wheel to you. So congratulations. Everyone who entered, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. We are already at 1,100 subscribers since the last video. So it's really exciting that the channel is continuing to grow. Looking forward to bringing you guys some great new content for next year and for the rest of this year. So hit that subscribe button, drop some comments below, and I will see you guys next week. Bye.